This latest chapter of One Punch Man saw the true realization of Garo's martial arts perfection, setting the stage for what will ultimately be the greatest challenge of his life. For the previous chapter, it was Metal Bat and Garo, hero and monster, against the so-called incarnation of Father Earth, Sage Centipede, a wretched arthropod of colossal proportions that they would attack from all angles. However, in the case of Garo, despite each of his many blows being incredibly devastating, they wouldn't amount to much in the long run as Sage Centipede's regenerative capability abilities were virtually instantaneous, serving to mitigate any and all damage sustained. Meanwhile, Metal Bat could not even dent the creature's exceedingly durable exoskeleton. That being said, despite Garo being unable to be decisive in his blows, it was all too clear to Sage Centipede that it was only a matter of time until Garo was able to circumvent this difficulty and threaten its life. And so being the dirty fighter that it is, Sage would consider using Metal Bat, who again was not perceived to be a proper threat in the slightest, as a hostile However, with how hostile Garo and Metal Bat seem to be alongside one another, this consideration would be swiftly dismissed. Now, Garo would propose that they destroy the creature from top to bottom in one fell swoop, yet Metal Bat would be quick to dismiss such a notion as it was something he imagined would require a number of S-Class individuals to accomplish, which is most definitely worth remembering for the events to come with our new chapter. But anyway, Sage Centipede, now desperate, would shift direction and target the helicopter in the process of transporting the A-Class heroes and civilians back to safety, knowing this would afford it the upper hand against these sentimental adversaries. From the helicopter, one shotter would attempt to send repelling fire, but it was no use as without his dominant eye, he was unable to actually land a shot. Not that his rounds could deal any meaningful damage if an S-Class hero like Metal Bat couldn't, but oh well. Sage would actually manage to grab hold of the aircraft, and as a result, the dynamic duo would cease all movement and submit to the monster's impending onslaught. It would rend the very earth beneath it, collapsing a great deal of the city. Which just goes to show just how massive this thing really is. I mean, there are skyscrapers that can barely be compared to the spikes along its body. After this attack, Sage Centipede would grab hold of Garo as he was the only adversary of note. Meanwhile, with the aid of Gearspur telepathically serving as his dominant eye, one shotter would then be able to land his shots, distracting the monster enough for Garo to pry himself free from its clutches, which would be followed by a staggering series of successive fists. But again, this thing is huge! And so while Garo was punching a portion of its abdomen, Sage would rear its ugly head and endanger Garo until out of nowhere, it would be Metal Bat, actually managing to rend the creature's flesh, allowing Garo to save the hostages. The damage Metal Bat has sustained only pumped him up more to the point where he was now an actual threat to some extent, and Metal Bat was looking to be pretty cool here. I've always enjoyed him as a character, but to be fair, he doesn't exactly have many feats under his belt. He's most definitely one of the weaker S-Class heroes, but he makes up for that with charm as far as I'm concerned. With the instruction of Metal Bat, Garo would chuck the aircraft towards a giant net, and now that blackmail was off the table, Garo and Metal Bat were charged up and ready to go. Metal Bat had his chivalrous spirit set ablaze while Garo made full use of his awakening breath. What was the signature move? Move of his former master Bang. Centipede would also prepare itself and all 6,666 of his legs to form a drill like assault. But Garo and Metal Bat were unfazed as they prepared their counterattack. And together, they tore the monster apart in what seemed to be an especially coordinated operation, which in fact absolutely was not. But regardless of the differences in their raw power, the very nature of their abilities were incredibly similar, which gave off that impression as a result. Garo's involvement here only made Metal Metal Bat that much stronger. Stronger than he had ever been before, and thanks to this resonance, Garo too had become even stronger. And with this newfound power, Garo pierced straight through Centipede and removed its regenerative core, throwing it up high and into the sky as Metal Bat collapsed from the damage. Which then brings us to this latest chapter as we would now open up to an ominous shot of Saitama with his feet in the water with the accompanying words, they're standing in turbulent waves, the strongest. What certainly seems to be a teaser of sorts for what we are all looking forward to, a confrontation between Garo and Saitama. To kick things off, we would have a somewhat unfamiliar man whose stomach was rumbling. From behind him would be A-Class number one, Sweet Mask, who was clutching onto his face and holding up his pants with his posterior showing. Now, if you remember, Ugly super violated this man previously, which seriously feels like a very long time ago. The Monster Association 
itself feels like ages ago at this point. Sweet Mask would question what the man was doing in such a place. The man whose shirt was well beyond oversized would recognize Sweet Mask and wonder the very same in his case. Mask would then wonder if the guy was a member of the media, being as famous as he is, and would admit that a monster had ruined his favorite pair of skinny jeans. He'd notice a large cloth near the man and question if he intended to go camping or something. He would then commandeer the tent to hide his backside since it was an emergency. However, this was actually the man's jacket. Mask would then tell the man to follow him to safety, but at the same time, he needed to make his way back to the battlefield in order to get his revenge on the monster who had ruined his jeans. However, as we all know by now, Ugly is very much dead, and so there's not really anything for Mask to fight. That being said, there's no way he was really going to do anything to Ugly in his acidic vomit form if he couldn't do anything to him in his base form. But to interrupt this, the man who, by now we should all be able to recognize to be S-Class number 10 Pig God, who had simply slimmed down after having not eaten a proper meal for quite some time, and here, he was consuming his former adversary, Gums, this thing that previously had given him a taste of his own medicine. Now with that being said, Pig God is nothing to sleep on. This guy is absolutely, positively an important figure in the story that I'm sure will only become more relevant in time. As if you remember, in the very same chapter that Ugly transformed, after saving all those lower class heroes, Pig God contemplated something rather peculiar. He gauged whether or not he should use a particular power of his, one we at this time are not yet privy to. However, he he would ultimately decide against it as this was quote not the time mentioned in the prophecy now the prophecy we may presume he is referring to would be that of the late fortune teller shibabawa who claimed the earth to be in danger on account of the greatest catastrophe of the era now pig god in this conflict has been greatly outmatched and up against several dragon level threats he'd even consider the fact that tatsumaki was struggling against one of them so for him to think that this unknown power would be a game changer is rather peculiar if this is something he needs to resist using for the time being, I'd imagine it must be a sort of final gambit or an ability of especially limited use. Either way, I do believe we should keep our eyes peeled on Pig God. And as he ate the remains of this monster, Sweet Mask was most definitely watching him. He'd wonder if the guy was a monster himself, but was uncertain and would ultimately just decide to part ways with him, never being able to put two and two together. But from there, we would get back to Garo versus Sage Centipede, who is currently in the process of desperately chasing after his regeneration core, being unable to pay any attention to Garo as he ran atop its back with incredible speed. Now we would again receive a shot that displays just how elongated this monster really is, as it looked as though it was able to breach the very heavens above with its massive form. The creature would then manage to collect its core, slowing down as Garo approached its apex. From there, he would go beyond the face of Sage, firmly planting his feet on the surface of his core as he built up the momentum to leap. And good lord, the sheer force of this movement being enough to immediately shatter the core behind him. And with ever accelerated speeds, he would reel back his fist to meet the face of the monster. Then recalling an early memory of his, back when he was new to Bang's tutelage, as the master had set up a number of tiles to be broken as a means of judging his new student's capabilities. From which point, Sourface would roll up his sleeves, ready to show off as a senior student. However, as he slammed his fist into the tiles, he ultimately just harmed himself in the process as these things were made of ceramic. And as Sourface complained calling the task impossible, Garo, the brand new student mind you, would begin to stack several more and strike. Everyone was in shock. Garo was confident in his performance and Bang was intrigued for sure. However, he would note that Garo was incredibly close as at the very bottom, there was one single tile remaining. But this time, Garo was certain that things would be different. That was the beginning of his journey and he has come so far. He would finally impact the face of Sage Centipede and begin to tear straight through the monster, a sight that is seen by the media, King, and most interestingly, Saitama. Garo, as he tore through the body of Sage Centipede, whose body was able to reach into the atmosphere, had officially reached the epitome of martial arts. This was the utmost limit of what it could accomplish. He'd remember the prior sentiments of Sage as he claimed to be divine retribution. He determined that the creature was wrong. This was a blessing. 
Garo emerged victorious and is now even stronger than he was before. Now, with that being said, Garo, like Saitama, is a character that lacks a limiter. And so to have reached the utmost limits of what martial arts can do may in the short term be a blessing. However, I imagine it to also very much be a curse. He may be capable of more, but with martial arts alone, he will never achieve more. And that is concerning. Garo would then think of Bang yet again, claiming to have broken them all this time. And this is probably one of the coolest shots of the character I have ever seen. And mind you, this man has a whole catalog of incredible images. But now with Garo having hit his apex in regards to martial arts, I can't help but presume him to be more susceptible to the beguilement of God, who offers powers to those desperate enough to accept his deals. Narratively, we have seen such propositions be made a few times now, with no one actually biting. Homeless Emperor being an exception, as he was a case study of sorts to exemplify the difference to be found in the wake of such an agreement, as a normal human was suddenly made to be a threat level dragon monster. And so if it were to ever happen, if it were to ever be accepted before our eyes, it would make sense for God to successfully strike a deal with Garo. Which we now also know to be a possibility despite his incredible strength, as such a thing had been proposed to Tatsumaki previously as well, despite her being an esper of such unbelievable might. One Punch Man seems to be on the cusp of absolute madness with Garo right now, and I am really eager to see where this all goes. And if you want to see all the hype to come along with us, be sure to subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on. We also have a brand new channel by the name of Plot Armor Comics, where we cover Western comics and would really appreciate your support over there as well. But when it comes to bring you some of the best One Punch Man content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.